traders again. My name is Zaki Anastasiu. Welcome to another edition of What's Next. And this is uh, just talking about what's next post-corona, post-COVID-19, how it's impacting businesses, how CEOs are navigating through these very challenging times. Um, and there's one CEO who has been voted as the best CEO during the lockdown period by my broadband, and that is Gion Fissad, who's the CEO of Afri Host. And Gion, it's good to see you. How have you been? Yeah, awesome, Aki. It's fantastic to see you. Uh, interesting times, obviously, that we're living through, but um, enjoying every moment as much as we can. Yeah, now listen, I want to ask you about AfriHost. I mean, you guys are about uh, connecting people. I'm, I'm one of your customers in my one business uh, that I use your uh, connectivity. Uh, I've had to deal with your network um, and your call center uh, in the background, and uh, they've been fantastic. They all told me they're all working off site. So, uh, Afri Host, you know, you've been voted the top CEO. I mean, what have you done that has made the difference? And uh, how is your company operating uh, remotely and during Corona? Cool. Well, uh, I'm glad to hear everything's going well for you. I can normally win. Uh Sometimes when people say they are a client of Afrio, I said I start to get a little nervous because I'm expecting to hear some horror stories sometimes. We don't always get things right, but I'm glad that uh, most of the time we, we do get things right. First of all, let me just say that when I, um, you know, when I was voted the top CEO, it was a, an amazing, uh, what a surprise. It was awesome. And uh, as I said, and I think I, I made comments to that my broadband article, it's really easy to, uh, to do a good job when you've got such a great team. And I, I'm, that, that isn't just words. My team is absolutely amazing. My partners, my entire, entire team, I love them all. And they are truly amazing. They make my job a lot, lot easier than it could be. So uh, your question in terms of what we've done, um, I think one of the keys in this time, especially as people aren't at the office and you just don't see them face to face and it's this weird new like through the screen time yeah. um the key is to stay in communication with them you know and we uh, you know i always i always had an open door policy at afrios and and i think one of the main things we did which which made a difference was i try to send out kind of uh afrios update videos where it would just be like me like this talking to the screen giving them updates um encouraging them to comments uh, we posted it on youtube on a like private channel um, yeah, encouraging guys to comment, uh, send me emails. They've all got my what's my uh, cell phone number, so they can WhatsApp me directly, and I try and get back to everybody. Look, I, I, I'm not going to pretend I'm the greatest at WhatsApp or email. Um, you know, obviously, I'll vote for that. Look, uh, my team takes priority over you, actually. So, yes, no, and then so should, uh, so should. Yeah. Um, and so I try and get back to everybody. And uh, as I say, I don't, I don't always get it right. But the, the bottom line is just, I think people need to know that we love them, you know. And uh, I always say that and uh, people think um, maybe just saying it because I'm full of it. I say we love our clients. We love our, our team. And we really do. I really believe we like family at Afrios. And, you know, could we do better in a lot of areas? Absolutely. You know, I, I think, I yeah. think. There's no question we could do a lot better in a lot of areas. But what I do know is we really try to give of our best. And I, I can't expect our team to really go out of their way for our clients if we don't go out of the way for them. So I, yeah, I really don't know like why specifically I got top CEO. And as I said, it was an awesome surprise. And um, yeah, it's just uh, it's great. Yeah, and I can tell you that uh, as a customer, when I do come into your offices on Ravonia Road to pick up a SIM card or whatever the case may be, you can really sense... Uh, that feeling of that company culture that you've enforced in your organization. And I, I'm so glad you spoke about that communication because um, I, I think many CEOs, uh, didn't, it wasn't necessarily intentional, right? Because we were like all caught like, wow, this has happened. You know, we all got to deploy remotely. And, and sometimes we kind of forget that there's people and lots of your people working all over the place and the importance of yeah. that frequent communication, you know, so that you don't feel alone out there. And I think that a lot of organizations are, are now realizing, hey, we need to communicate a lot more often. So good on you for doing that. But take me back to uh, the, the beginning of March at AfriHost when you, when you saw this coming. You must have seen the lockdown approaching and you must have realized, hey, you know, there are going to be millions and of people that are going to be uh, working remotely. The lockdown is a real thing. 
what did you do in your organization to just to make sure that you've got the redundancy and that you're able to work remotely? Because how do you issue a SIM card working remotely, for example? It's easy to top up data and airtime, but issuing, you know, routers and, and SIM cards must have been a challenge. Look, uh, I'm not going to pretend it was, uh, it was very challenging. Uh, fortunately, we were, in a, we, were, we were in a position at the time where, you know, all of our um, support team, be they on, you know, calls or email tickets uh, in accounts or via WhatsApp, um, we've already got systems in place that allowed them to work from home in the past. And, uh, you know, we had different, we had different uh, teams that, that would work remotely at some times. And because we had those systems in place that allowed us to see guys who were, say, logged in to take phone calls, the number of phone calls they took. Yeah. You know, we've got a rating system in place where clients can get back to us if we're dropping the ball. Um, and we already had a lot of those things in place. So, for us, we were very fortunate, and we and we also give every single one of our team members like free internet, you know, free yes. uncapped fiber or uncapped LTE if they're not covered by fiber or ADSL or whatever. So they already had um, the vast majority of them already had uh, good internet at home, you know, which yeah. was very helpful because you we it was just impossible to go into this lockdown period where our call volume actually over the last few months has increased. Um, compared to pre-lockdown, and it's actually a surreal experience. I've come into the office today, so I'm actually sitting in my office. Okay. Um, sorry, I don't have my mask on. Where's my mask? No, not yet. And um, and coming into the office and just seeing an empty parking lot, walking through the office where you know 92% of our of our team is still working from home. Um, so it's like a surreal experience, actually, just walking through all the the departments that I'm used to walking through and having lots of like faces and people, there's just nothing. And the thought that we've done this for, I think we're close to a hundred days now since lockdown, it's like 96 days or something, yeah, yeah. you know, having, having done that, like running our company with 92% of the people working from home has been amazing. Uh, the, the fact that we've been able to do it has really, has really been surprising. And um, look, it hasn't been easy. They're, you know, yeah. they're, they're definite challenges, you know, um, but yeah. Yeah. So, Kian, I mean, it's quite interesting um, uh, how you've run the company operationally and it, it seems to be working pretty well. What are you seeing your customers doing during the lockdown period? Because I imagine that a lot of organizations traditionally would have had people coming into the companies. Now they've, you know, remotely. Have you seen an increase in uh, issuing of more SIM cards, for example? Are people using more data during the lockdown period over and above what they were using before, for example? What kind of patterns are you seeing in your, on your networks uh, from your different service providers? Because, I mean, you're dealing with a whole host of different people, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's been very interesting to see. I mean, the week before lockdown, you know, when, uh, when the president on the thing was on the Sunday mentioned we'd be going into lockdown on that Friday yes. was absolutely insane because obviously then a lot of companies, like, as I mentioned, we've got, our, our team's got free internet at home. Um, but you know, the vast majority of companies, they don't necessarily provide free internet for their staff. Yes. And uh, so there was a, a like insane mad rush that week before to where guys actually, re where, where companies, you know, smaller companies actually realized, wow, we're going to have to have our guys at home. They're going to need the internet. Do they have the internet? So there was a mad rush for SIM cards, for fiber installations. And, um, you know, let me just say the fiber, I think that the fiber, the FNOs, um, you know, OpenServe, Vumatel, Frogfoot, TT Connect, all of the guys, they did an amazing job uh, pre-lockdown, during lockdown to actually still keep connecting people because, you know, it was, it was trying times. Obviously, you know, as a client, if you need the internet, that's super important to you. And, uh, and the fact that there's a thousand other people harassing us or harassing is the wrong word, begging us for, uh, for yeah. internet, you know, that's irrelevant to you. You need the internet. And it's a, it's a, it was a, and also it's just an incredibly stressful time. People didn't know what was coming up and they you mentioned earlier feeling isolated and they were, you know, it's, it was really hard if you didn't have it. So, so we saw a massive uptake in that. It was, it was a challenge, you know, in terms of data usage, you know, the, the patterns changed quite dramatically, you know, yeah. the, the peak time went up, um, you know, over and above, you know, the, the Netflix and chill time. Uh, our peak times are usually from about six in the evening till 
about 10 at night. We noticed that they stayed at six in the evening, but they stretched longer to about midnight and they went up by about 30% of the actual usage. But was, what was more interesting is that obviously overall daily usage increased dramatically up to about 61% across normal times, you know, so our, uh, our network went up dramatically. And then on top of that, the fiber providers, which was awesome of all of them, they, they doubled um, all fiber, all fiber lines. They just doubled yeah. them for free. You know, so if you on a 10 meg, now you're on a 20 meg, et cetera, which was awesome. But obviously as the, we're using our network in the background to deliver that data, mm -hmm. um, that was suddenly a, <laughs> an additional challenge for, for us and, and all other ISPs, you know, not just us. We're obviously yeah. not yeah. in a unique position, but um, but it was, it was very interesting just seeing the, the usage change. You know, obviously a lot of the streaming services shot up in usage. We also noticed that people got up a lot later, which, uh, you know, <laughs> they obviously spent a bit more quality time in bed, uh, coffee in bed before working as yeah. opposed to before getting to the office, beating traffic. And um, yeah, streaming went up quite dramatically. Um, all kinds of communication, obviously Zoom, went out the park you know other things like microsoft team whatsapp whatsapp video yeah. that kind of stuff that usage also ends up quite dramatically so there I mean, is definitely a change yeah yeah i mean it's fascinating here and i was talking to uh, godfrey Motza, the ceo of mtn i was talking to shamil yeah. just from uh, from vodacom they both said that uh, uh, you know, compared to the same time last year they've almost seen like a hundred percent increase in in data usage yeah. Um, yeah. Are you seeing that is same exponential growth? I mean, it, it was growing before the lockdown, but I think with the lockdown, it's just accelerated it even further. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, the amount of growth has been uh, has been amazing. You know, it's been. Uh, I think from the mobile data point of view, because we obviously also sell uh, we sell mobile data, you know, on, yes. our phone, on phones and also uh, via. Mo, uh, mo, Wi-Fi devices and that kind of thing. We saw that usage go up because they've traditionally been more expensive. So they came from a lower base in a way. So we saw that increase by more of a percentage. Um, whereas fiber, you know, guys were already using a lot of fiber. They're already streaming a lot because obviously they already had the uncapped. And I mean, part of the challenge for us as a as an ISP is that we were obviously most of our most of our clients on fiber are on uncapped. Um, so they're paying us a set amount per month. Yeah. And so getting that double up from the fiber providers and now being at home more, using it more is awesome for them. But for us, obviously, we're not getting any extra revenue. So that was a bit of a challenge for us as ISPs. And I think speaking to my peers in, in, in ISP land, um, that was a, a similar thing we all felt. Whereas I think with a mobile, you know, the, 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 you know, the MTN and Vodacom, I can't actually talk for them, but... For, for them, they, they pay on a per usage model as opposed to an uncapped model. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, it, it, their experience may be slightly different. But in terms of overall usage, absolutely. Now, what's been interesting is that there have always been these technologies like Zoom, um, Microsoft Teams, all of these things have been available for years and years and years. And yes. obviously, there's been a, a slow, gradual uptake over the years. But these last three months have just accelerated that uptake. It's like changing the way people do business. People are like realizing, sure, but we can actually have our team at home and the business doesn't fall apart. Um, it's changing the world. It really is. And especially mm -hmm. from the point of view of like, the internet and how people use the internet and relate to each other and um, yeah. So Gian, is, it, is this going to be the new normal? And uh, I did a survey with some with a webinar the other day, um, and uh, you know a lot of people were saying that a lot of their companies are subsidising some of their costs. About twenty percent say they're subsidising their costs, but most people are saying that companies are not subsidizing the data costs, for example. Uh, companies are saying, well, listen, you're scoring from working from home, you've got less travel expenses, you've got less uh, you know, wear and tear on your car, you, you're spending less time traveling, for example. Uh, so you know, there's a give and take. Is this what's going to happen in the future? Is this going to be the new normal? And uh, you look at many organizations and already they've said, now look at Discovery, for example, they've told their staff, you know, you're going to be operating remotely until the year end. Twitter have said you're going to be doing this forever. So I guess, I guess this yeah. is the new normal. I, I think we, we're moving towards a, a, a hybrid model where you'll probably work half the time in the office, half the time at work. I don't know where you're seeing it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with that 100%. You know, we ran a survey with our team um, about two weeks ago where we just – we wanted to find out how they were doing specifically, you know, if there are any areas we missed that we could help them with. So we asked them about how they're feeling, you know, if 
for themselves personally in the in, in this these times uh, in this pandemic time, but also how they were they were feeling towards us and working at home and whatever. And from our point of view, eighty seven percent of our team said they felt like they could do this forever, you know. And wow. and but but. But with the caveat that they would like to maybe, from their point of view, come in like once a week, you know, and, and have a meeting with the team, see people face to face. And so, so like, and, and I can see from our numbers, you know, in terms of our, uh, you know, we, we do a lot of stats and a lot of metrics around client support, um, where we, we, you know, we track waiting times, hold times, call times, obviously the the way clients rate us, they get an SMS often into action with us where they can rate us on a scale of zero to 10. And, uh, and I can see we, we are still delivering a solid service. As I say, we can always improve, but it's been interesting to see that, that we are able to do this. You know? Now, counterpointing that or counteracting that, um, one of the, the top three, like we gave him a whole list of things to choose, like what are the top three things that are worrying you in, in this time of uh, the pandemic. And, and the third one, in the, and it was a list of about 10, so the third top one was social isolation. And I think that there's certain people who wouldn't mind staying at home forever, and it's fine. You know? But yeah. I, think, I think, you know, there is something lacking with, the, with a Zoom call like this. You know, it's great because I can see your face, we can interact, and it, feel, it is real. Um, but in the same way, it's not 100% the same as having that, you know, having your team around you. And I think one of the things we are seeing that we're missing, especially, you know, in fact, in all of our teams, in support, in branding, in dev, in sysadmin, is that there's a, lot of, there's a lot of learning that happens when you are in an environment where you're surrounded by your peers, where you're surrounded by people who maybe know more about you in certain areas, where they can overhear you talking or you can just quickly ask them something. And I mean, a lot of our teams are just having meetings where they're all on a Zoom meeting, yeah. you know, for no apparent or no real reason except to be able to just ask each other questions. But I think there's a lot of learning that's lost when we are in isolation. So I think, I think even though, like, I think for the short term, this is definitely something that, as I said, 87% of our guys says we can do this forever. But I think the reality is there's still that need of having a team around you. And mm -hmm. I, I think that... There's a lot of learning that can happen there. So I think it'll be a hybrid model. I uh, keep yeah. to go back to your question. I think, I definitely think we'll look at maybe rotating teams in, you know, a few days a week, once a week, maybe coming in every second or third week, um, just, to, just to keep that, uh, that spirit alive and also that learning alive. You know? Yes, yes, yes. So, Gian, I mean, um, uh, you spoke about fiber. Um, uh, we've we've also touched on, you know, the LTE networks, and I think that, uh, you know, you, you know, I use I use, for example, Telcom and uh, MTN's fixed LTE. They're fantastic if you don't have fiber in the areas. Um, yeah. But the, you know, both MTN and Vodacom are have now launched commercial 5G services, which is quite yep. exciting. Um, how yeah. do you feel about 5G? It's obviously going to be something on, on your radar and you're going to be offering it, I'm pretty sure, if not already. Um, how excited are you about 5G and where do you see the prospects? Look, 5G is a, an absolutely amazing technology. Where, like In terms of what they've defined it as and already in terms of some of the real world uh, usage we're getting. I mean, as you mentioned, MTN, officially launched it, I think it was yesterday, you know, yes. it's different, different products available, mobile and fixed. And, uh, and I saw my broadband published this morning, some, some like real world results in different areas. And it's absolutely staggering. You know, the, the speed they can get is beautiful. The latency is amazing. Upload, download speed. Um, obviously 5G as with any mobile, um, service is, there, it, it is limited to the spectrum and the and the that, that it's on, and it can be oversaturated. But the amazing thing with five G is it's far, you know, far more people can use it than say LTE or four G. Um, so I, I think I think it's an amazing technology. You know, I I don't think it'll necessarily replace fixed line services like fiber because you yeah. know they they are slightly different. But without question, it's a it's an amazing replacement. Um, obviously, the cost needs to be looked at. You know, I think I think um, going into it now, 
you know, the, the, the mobile providers are still figuring out exactly uh, where to price it, how to price it. They need to look at the effects on the network, on their own, on their own mobile network. And also, because ECASA has just given temporary, um, you know, different license, uh, different spectrums temporarily during this pandemic, there's maybe a bit of uncertainty around what happens if ECASA pulls the spectrum, you know, whenever that happens to be, you know, how will that affect their services? And so I think they're treading lightly in that. And obviously from our point of view, it's definitely something that we are working towards offering together with, uh, with a mobile networks provider. Well, I think that, um, I think both the uh, Minister of Communication and, and, and the President himself, who's kind of initiated this uh, spectrum allocation, albeit temporarily, I think they've all realized the necessity of it. I mean, I mean, some of the network CEOs said that if they hadn't had that additional capacity in the spectrum, um, you know, they don't know what their, what their networks would have done. I mean, they wouldn't have been able to cope quite clearly uh, during the lockdown period, just on the increase in the demand for data, for example. So I'm really hoping that sense prevails and they, they issue the, the, you know, the, the, the spectrum and we finalize it once and for all because, you know, we've been talking about this for years already. So, and, and, and also, Gian, I'm sure that, you know, just hearing the way you're talking with this being the new normal, it's... Um, I mean, we're going to be needing more capacity and more people are going to be, you know, having to be connected. We haven't even discussed education, for example, where you've had millions of kids doing homeschooling yeah. and that's got to change as well. Have, have you, Gian Fisser, the CEO of AfriHost, had an aha moment during this lockdown period? <laughs> in terms of uh, in terms of education, in terms any, of any, um, any aha moment, like a, a wow moment well, that you discovered something I mean, for me, in business or people or whatever. No, for me, I've, I've absolutely I've had a, I've had a lot of moments. It's been amazing for me to when when I realised that we are actually living through a truly historic moment. You know, yes. this is this is something that people reference in in decades to come, the, the time. Look, we, we don't know where this is going to go, what's going to happen in the future, but I believe 2020 is going to be looked back on and spoken about from many, many different angles. And the fact that we're actually living through it is amazing. You know, I've got, I've got four kids. Um, you know, we've been obviously homeschooling, my wife and I, and, uh, and seeing how they interact with the internet is absolutely staggering to me. You know, I'm I'm, a, I'm getting on in age now, I'm 45, and uh, you know I, I still remember growing up without any internet, without any mobile phones, without anything, you know, and, and for them, the internet is like water. It's, in fact, it's probably more important than water, you know. They're yeah. my early warning signals if anything goes wrong with the internet because, you know, they'll be working on something, they'll be dead, you know, we, we can't get on. They, it's absolutely staggering to see them interact with the different tools that the schools have provided, or just how they're learning, I think the world that, that we're moving into is going to be vastly, vastly different. Uh, what this pandemic that has done is I think we were on, on the same path as, we, as, as, you know, as we're going to get to in terms of uh, where we're going. It's just accelerated everything dramatically. I think. Yeah. And, uh, and for me to be in the internet industry is, is a real privilege because I think the internet is an incredible tool that can help so many people. And, you know, we just got to get over some hurdles, like how can we provide more people with the internet at lower costs? Because the value it can bring from an educational point of view is absolutely staggering. You know, I, yeah. I really think it has the power to transform this country if we, if we can get it right. Yeah, I mean, it's really, it's, it's the glue that is, that, that, that is binding this economy together. And uh, I was just saying to um, somebody the other day, I mean, could you imagine if we had this, if this had to happen 10 years ago? Um, wow. We wouldn't be able to have this discussion. I mean, business would have been completely hamstrung. And if we, wow. if we are economically where we are because of this virus globally, you've seen the recessions, can you just imagine what would have happened 10 years ago? Because at least now businesses are still able to operate, but 10 years ago would have yeah. been impossible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously the, the economic impact is dramatic, you know, and I don't want to underplay that at all. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, you know, there is, there's, there's talk about the fact that our, uh, our GDP is going to decrease by the most since the Great Depression, you know, and obviously the, it's like a, a, a real serious hit. But as you say, I think, like it would, it could have and would have been so much worse if we didn't have the internet to continue kind of doing a lot of the stuff 
mm. that we that we are doing. You know, I, I I think I think it would have been five, ten, ten, twenty times worse. You know, at least at least there's certain industries that have been able to to continue. You know, yeah, even while yeah. others unfortunately haven't. Kian Fisser, it's been an absolute privilege to talk to you and hear your thoughts on, Thank you. uh, on, on, these, uh, on these very interesting times and how you've been navigating uh, through these waters with your company, AfriHost. We thank you for your time. Be well. May your company you, grow Aki. from strength to strength, and we thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Aki. Absolutely. It was an absolute privilege and pleasure to chat to you, to chat to you too. And well done on what's next. I think it's a great initiative. I think you, and, and I think you're doing a great job. So congrats. Thanks, Thanks Fionn. Thank you. Thank you.